Good morning from the Hawaiian Eye Conference on the Big Island of Hawaii. We're pleased to be here today with Dr. Steve Charles, the head of our ASCRS Retina Committee. Thank you so much for being with us, Steve. I'm glad to be here. Steve, we've spoken in the past about the importance of retinal imaging prior to cataract surgery, but I think that this emphasis is becoming more and more important. Can you explain for us why it's important to image the retina prior to cataract surgery and, and how it helps us out? There's been tremendous emphasis on, on refractive surprises for, for good reason. But if you get the refraction exactly right, you use all 12 formulas and 47 different ways mm -hmm. to measure posterior corneal curvature and the patient can't see well, they're not happy. And that applies to all patients, not just premium IOL patients. Mm -hmm. So what's the problem? The problem is when you look at the fundus, there are numerous conditions that are flat out invisible that markedly affect visual outcomes and require treatment visible only by OCT. Not by optos, not by angiography, that's not the answer. So the answer isn't wide field, the answer is specifically OCT. People say, well, you know, you can't bill for it unless you just do it. It's part of the workup. It's as essential as listening to somebody's heart before you do heart surgery. So everybody needs an OCT and you gotta do it right. You've got to look at all the black and white slices yourself, none of this color coding that actually hides data because of these auto-segmentation algorithms, and don't let a tech pick an image. It's just not a coding and billing event. Mm -hmm. It's appropriate workup to get the patients the proper care and high patient satisfaction scores. That's what it's all about. Steve, that's such a good point. And, and I would also add to the mix that some subtleties of the retina, such as a mild epiretinal membrane, are challenging to see even with a clear optical media. But when you're talking about trying to look through a two plus or three plus cataract, those, those, uh, those fine findings can be even harder to see visually at the slit lamp. Absolutely. There are a number of conditions that fall in this category of, of virtually impossible to see. One, mm -hmm. vitreomax retraction syndrome, mm -hmm. uh, myopic vitreomax dyskesis, huge mm -hmm. issue. Uh, mm -hmm. Subtle epiretinal membranes, as you point out, true. Uh, some of the patients with AMD will have a few drusen, and you'll look at the fun and say, no way they have a leak. You get OCT mm -hmm. and they got fluid under the retina. Mm -hmm. And now we're seeing central serous in older patients. Uh, we're seeing patients in the 50s, 60s with central serous because of the widespread injectable steroid use for pain management. Well, Steve, I wonder if I can play a little bit of a de devil's advocate for a moment. I wonder if I can ask, what's the point? Why image the, the retina prior to cataract surgery? Is it such that you can set expectations for the outcome of the procedure? Or is it to try to intervene for a problem prior to embarking on the cataract it's procedure? Both. It's both. Yeah. I mean, patient expectations are a huge issue. Mm -hmm. But let's say the patient has macular. Let me give you a specific example. Mm -hmm. If you use a scan because the cataract's pretty dense to measure axial length, you'll get it wrong if the macula is mm -hmm. elevated. Mm -hmm. You have to use low coherence interferometry. Mm -hmm. So just knowing what the, the real axial length is is a big deal. That's a great point. And, and I think that you mentioned off camera just a bit earlier about uh, some key opinion leaders who, who had opined that, um, that, that imaging the retina prior to the procedure can point out to patients uh, pre-existing problems that then, uh, th that then don't become part of the uh, challenging discussion after surgery. Yeah, I think that just a way to think of it is if you discover it before surgery, you explain it to the patient, mm -hmm. show it to the patient, you go ahead with the cataract surgery unless the retina problem needs immediate management. Often you do go ahead with the cataract mm -hmm. surgery, properly measuring axial length with an optical means, not with ultrasound, uh, and you tell the patient about it. Okay, we'll get it later. That's a pre-existing condition. Mm -hmm. But if you don't discover it ahead of time, and later the patient's unhappy, can't see, and you say, oh, we discovered this. Well, gee whiz, doctor, why didn't you mm -hmm. discover it before surgery? That's called a complication, even though technically it's not. Well, Steve, this has been a great discussion for us about the importance of OCT imaging of the macula prior to cataract surgery. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise today. I appreciate it. Thank you so much.